My seminar today is about the mediastinum. The mediastinum is the space between the lungs and their pleura. It is divided into superior and inferior. The inferior one is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior. This is the superior mediastinum, and this is the inferior, where uh, it is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior mediastinum. The superior mediastinum lies above a line drawn from the lower border of T4 to the sternal angle. This is the horizontal line drawn from the sternal angle to the level of T4. Above is the superior, below is the inferior. First, the superior mediastinum uh, it is the space bounded anteriorly by the malibrium sternum and posteriorly by the vertebral bodies from T1 to T4. This is the superior mediastinum. It is bounded anteriorly by the sternum, posteriorly by the first uh, four thoracic vertebra, and inferiorly, this is the horizontal line. The superior mediastinum contains the aortic arch and its surrounds, the brachiocephalic vein and the superior vena cava. You can see here, this is the aortic arch with the major bronze and the brachiocephalic veins forming the superior vena cava, the trachea and the esophagus, the thoracic duct and lymph nodes and nerves. The inferior mediastinum uh, is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior. The anterior mediastinum, this is the anterior mediastinum, is bounded superiorly by the horizontal plane. Uh, anteriorly, it is bound by the body and xiphoid process of the sternum. Posteriorly, it is bounded by the heart. Inferiorly, by the diaphragm. It contains the thymus gland, the mammary vessels, and the lymph nodes. The middle mediastinum it lies between the anterior and posterior mediastinum. It contains the heart and pericardium, the aortic arch, no, the ascending aorta, the pulmonary trunk, uh, superior and inferior vena cava, as it is shown here. This is the aortic arch, the superior vena cava, and the heart, and uh, the pulmonary vessels and left and right phrenic nerves. The posterior mediastinum, uh, it lies between the posterior aspect of heart and between the thoracic spine. It contains the descending aorta, this is the descending aorta, the esophagus, as it is shown here, and this is the esophagus with the arch of the esophagus, and the thoracic duct and lymph nodes, which are the paraaortic paraesophageal and paraspinal lymph nodes. This is a frontal chest x-ray uh, showing the mediastinal borders. On the right side, the right mediastinal border is formed from superiorly to inferiorly by, first we have the brachiocephalic vein, and then the superior vena cava, more inferiorly is the right atrium, and uh, the last one is the inferior vena cava. This is on the right side. On the left side, we have superiorly the subclavian vessels, and then the aortic arch, and then the pulmonary trunk. Between them is called the space called aortopulmonary uh, space window. And then more inferiorly, we have the left ventricle. Usually, the left atrium does not contribute to the border. The same image we can see on uh, coronal uh, CT. This is the right border formed by the superior vena cava and the right atrium, while the left border formed by the aortic knuckle, the pulmonary trunk, and the left ventricle. On lateral chest x ray, the anterior border is formed by the right ventricle, the most anterior chamber and the pulmonary outflow tract, while posteriorly we have the left atrium and the left ventricle 
and the IBC, which will cross the diaphragm to enter the right atrium. This is a sagittal CT image showing this is the right ventricle with the pulmonary trunk, and this is the left atrium and the left ventricle. The aortic knuckle is formed by the posterior part of the aortic arch. In young people, it may be indistinct, while in elderly, it is very prominent due to aorta unfolding. Sometimes a small nipple may be seen projecting from the aortic knuckle, caused by the left superior intercostal vein as it crosses the aorta to drain to the left brachiocephalic vein. This is the aortic nipple, and this is the left superior intercostal vein. This is the arch of the aorta, where the left superior intercostal vein will cross the arch of the aorta to reach to the brachiocephalic vein. Again, this is the nipple. The same image, this is the aortic nipple, formed by the left superior intercostal vein. This is the left superior intercostal vein as it crosses in front of the aorta to reach to the brachiocephalic vein. This is the brachiocephalic vein. The aortic pulmonary window is the space between the aortic knuckle and the pulmonary trunk. This is the aortic pulmonary window. This is the ascending aorta and descending aorta. And this is the pulmonary, the beginning of the pulmonary trunk. So this space between them is called the aorta pulmonary window. Failure to identify this space indicates pathology. This is the aorta pulmonary window, which normally should have a concave lateral border. Well, here, here we can see this is a convex border. So this convex border uh, has many causes, most commonly mediastinal lymphadenopathy may be caused by other causes like mediastinal fat, aortic or bronchial artery aneurysm, and malignancy. The aorta may be invisible in young people, but it is usually seen at least in part of it in middle-aged uh, subjects. The ascending aorta is usually indistinct, while the arch curves evenly from front to back, and the descending aorta is seen anterior to the vertebral cone. In old people, unfolding may cause the aorta to lie over the vertebral bodies, as it is shown here. This is the descending aorta where it lies uh, over the vertebral bodies. The thoracic duct. The thoracic duct arises from a saccular lymphatic reservoir called the cisterna chile which lies behind the right cross of the diaphragm, anterior to the level of L1, L2, and then it drains to the posterior mediastinum. This is the cistern chile at the level of L1, 2 Then passing through the aortic opening in the diaphragm at the level of T12, the thoracic duct passes through three important levels. The first level is the level of the aortic opening, uh, where it lies uh, with, the, with the aorta and the azygous vein through the same opening. And then this is at the level of T12. Then it will pass uh, uh, in, the, in the middle with the azygous vein to its right side and the aorta to its left side and ascends to the level of T5. Well, uh, at this level, it will turn to the left of the esophagus and then the first important level is at the level of C7. Well, uh, at, at this level, it will arch over the apex of the lung to drain into the left jugular subclavian junction. So these are three important levels. The T12 at the level of the opening, and T5 where it comes to the left of the esophagus, and at C7 where it will arch over the apex to drain into the regular subclavian junction. It receives lymphatic drainage from the left aspect of the head, the left aspect of the neck, from the left arm, and from the left uh, chest, and from the 
Dernakai, which drains the abdomen and the legs. On the right side, we have the right lymphatic duct. This duct is formed by three trunks. Uh, the first is the right jugular trunk that uh, drains the right side of the head and neck. And this is the right jugular trunk. And the second one is the right subclavian trunk that drains the right arm and the right half of the thoracoabdominal wall. And the third one is the right bronchogestinal trunk, which drains the hemithorax, including the right heart, the right lung, and part of the liver. On CT, axial CT, we can see this is the carina, it's the tracheal where it divides, and this is the esophagus. This is the descending aorta. This is the azygous vein. It lies between the azygous vein and the aorta. This is the thoracic duct. This is the same image. This is the esophagus, the descending aorta, and the azygous, and this is the thoracic duct. Now, the gestinal lymph nodes, we have three groups, the anterior, middle, and posterior. The anterior the gestinal lymph nodes Compose of internal memory chain, which accompanies the internal memory vessels. This is the internal memory lymph node. And the second group is the pre aortic or pre vascular lymph nodes anterior to the ascending aorta. This is the aorta. And this is the lymph node, pre aortic lymph node. Second is the middle mediastinal lymph nodes which we explained previously, they compose of bronchopulmonary along the, uh, the side of the hymen and the carino below the hymen and the tracheobronchial above the tracheobronchial angle and the left and right paratracheal lymph nodes. The azygous lymph node, which lies at the tracheobronchial angle, this is the level of azygous lymph nodes, pre-tracheal in front of the trachea, and the aortopulmonary lymph nodes, which lies at the aortopulmonary window. The posterior mediastinal lymph nodes, these are found in the posterior mediastinal and along the aorta, the esophagus, and the spine. So they are called paraaortic, paraspinal, and paraesophageal. Normally, lymph nodes are not seen by chest x ray, but they can be seen by CT. And if they are more than one centimeter, they are likely to be pathological. This one is the pre-vascular in front of the vessels. And these two lymph nodes are the right and left paratracheal lymph nodes. And this is the pre-vertebral lymph node. The thymus is part of the lymphatic system. And it lies in the interior mediastinum. It is composed of two lobes, the left one which is larger and higher than the right, and extends down as far as the fourth costal cartilage in infants. It is a soft tissue structure and molded into the sternum and ribs anteriorly, the pericardium, the drain vessels, and the trachea posteriorly. The thymus is visible on chest X-ray within 24 hours of birth, and it gradually involutes after two years, so it is rarely seen after eight years of age. This is the normal thymus. On chest x-ray, uh, the lower edge is usually very well defined, so forming what is called cell sign. The normal thymus should have normal vascular markings to it, and it should normally, uh, does not cause any deviation of the normal structures. In CT, the thymus has homogeneous density, with that of the muscles, uh, while on this is on CT, this is the normal thymus, similar to the density of the muscle. While on MRI, this is T1 MRI and T2 it is usually higher than the muscle. This is the right and the left lobe. This is again the right and the left lobe of the thymus. On ultrasound, it can be seen by a high frequency uh, probe where the internal architecture can be seen. This is the normal thymus. 
the zygous system. The zygous system is composed of zygous vein on the right and hemiazygous and accessory hemiazygous on the left. First is the zygous vein. The zygous vein, this one is the zygous vein on the right side, and this is the accessory hemiazygous, and this is the hemiazygous on the left. The zygous vein arises anterior to the level of L2. It is either arise as a branch of the IVC or it is formed by the confluence of the ascending lumbar and subcostal veins. The zygous vein passes with the opening of the aorta at the level of T12 and then it ascends till the level of T8 where both accessory hemiazygous and hemi and the hemiazygous drains into it, continuing superiorly at the level of T4, it will form the arch of the azygous vein that will drain into the superior vein cava. The azygous vein receives from all the posterior intercostal veins except the first one, which will drain into the brachiocephalic vein. It also receives the hemiazygous, the accessory hemiazygous, at the level of T8 and receives the right bronchial vein, esophageal, pericardial, and intestinal vessels. The hemiazygous vein, it arises in a similar manner to the azygous vein, but it, is, it lies to the left side of the aorta. This is the hemiazygous. It, its origin may communicate with the left renal vein. So there may be a communication between the left renal vein and the hemiazygous. It descends anterior to the vertebral column to the mid thoracic level, and then behind the aorta, it will drain into the azygous vein. It receives the left ascending lumbar vein, this is the left ascending lumbar, and the lowest four posterior intercostal veins. The accessory hemiazygous, this one, it receives the four to the eight posterior intercostal veins while the first three drains to the left brachiocephalic vein. So the azygous system is composed from the azygous vein on the right, which receives all the posterior veins, intercostal veins, except the first one, which drains to the brachiocephalic vein. And on the left side, it is divided into the first three, which will drain into the brachiocephalic vein. Then from the fourth one till the eighth one, they will drain into the accessory hemiazygous. And uh, the last four with the ascending lumbar, they will drain into the hemiazygous. On this CT image, we can see this is the ascending aorta, the descending aorta, and this is the superior vein cava. This is the azygous vein, and this is the arch of the azygous vein at the level of T4, where it will drain into the superior vein cava. This is a sagittal image. You can see this is the azygous vein, and this is the arch of the azygous vein as it crosses above the right hilum, and it drains into the superior vein cava. Also, in this coronal section, we can see this is the azygous vein with the arch of the azygous vein on the right side, and the accessory hemiazygous and hemiazygous on the left side, they will drain into the azygous vein. On this axial image, we can see this is the arch of the azygous vein, where it will drain to the superior vena cava. This is the level of T4. And here we can see this is the accessory hemiazygous. More inferior section, we can see this is the accessory hemiazygous where it will drain to the azygous vein at the level of T8. Then more inferiorly here, uh, it will show the hemiazygous, not the accessory. The hemiazygous and the azygous vein, and these are the same, the azygous and hemiazygous vein. In these tunnel lines, we have what is called line and stripe. The line is term used for the soft tissue, the linear soft tissue density, which is outlined by air from one side. But if it is lined 
fire from both sides, which is called stripe. First, we have the right paratracheal stripe, which is formed uh, by the right tracheal wall. Uh, we explained it previously. It is less than three millimeters in diameter. And if it is widened, as it is shown here, it indicates middle intestinal pathology. This is a CT image showing this is the trachea, this is the right paratracheal stripe. This is an abnormal right paratracheal stripe caused by large ectopic parathyroid adenoma. As you see, this is widening of the right paratracheal stripe on both ends. The posterior paratracheal stripe is formed by the posterior wall of the trachea and outlined on either side by air. It should be also less than three mm. This is the trachea and this is the posterior paratracheal stripe. The aortopulmonary stripe a striated interface crossing the aortic arch and the main pulmonary artery. This is the aortopulmonary stripe, this one. <coughs> this is an abnormal stripe bulging convex, seen on both image in patients with lymphoma. The posterior junctional line is formed by a position of the two lungs posteriorly. It extends from the, uh, above the clavicle from the level of T1 uh, and downward till the aortic arch. Sometimes it uh, extends below the level of aortic arch. This line represents the four layers of pleura between the posterior parts of the lungs seen from the front. This is the posterior junction line from above the level of the clavicle to the aortic arch. And this one is the posterior junction line. On CT, this is the posterior junctional line. The anterior junctional line is formed by a position of the lungs anteriorly. It begins below the level of the clavicle. This is the anterior junctional line and runs inferiorly to the left. It always ends at the right ventricular outflow tract. On chest x ray, this is the anterior junctional line from the below the level of the clavicle to, to the right ventricle. And this is the anterior junctional line. This is an abnormal anterior junctional line seen in patient with, new, with the right lobe lobectomy, right middle lobe lobectomy, where it is deviated to the right side. And as I agree, if a geal line and recess is formed between the, as I, uh, the esophagus and the zygos. This is the uh, zygoesophageal line. And this is the normal zygoesophageal line. This is the esophagus and posteriorly, posterior lateral to it is the zygos. So this is the nine and posterior to the nine we have an zygoesophageal recess. This is an abnormal zygoesophageal line. You can see this is the convexity of the zygoesophageal line on both uh, X-ray and on CT also due to large hiatus hernia. The paraspinal lines are uh, formed on both sides of the spines of the vertebral bodies. They are outlined by lung opposing the spinal column. The right line is sharper than the left. As uh, on the left side, we have the descending aorta, which tends to reflect the pleura of the, the thoracic spine. So if widening of the right paraspinal line is all, it is always abnormal or pathological. And the distance from the lateral border of the spine to the line may vary with the body habitus. It may reach up to one centimeter on the left in obese people. And a uh, widening of, of, of the paravertebral soft tissue beyond the transverse process is always abnormal. This is the paraspinal line on the right side, and this is on the left side. Normally, on CT, this is the right and the left paraspinal lines. This is the right and the left. Now we have CT levels. The first level is the level of T3, which is called the level of the superior intestinal. 
This logo is formed by the trachea and the esophagus posteriorly. And uh, this level, we have the major vessels. These vessels are formed anteriorly by the brachiocephalic veins. This is the right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein. More posterior to them are the branch of the aorta. This is the right brachiocephalic artery. And on the left, the left common cartilage and the left subclavian. The left brachiocephalic vein will crosses over these arteries, all these three arteries, to drain into the right side, to drain with the right side into the superior vein cava. This is the same, the level of chiefly, where we can see this, these are the veins, the right and the left brachiocephalic veins. And here the brachiocephalic artery divided into right common carotid, right subclavian, and on the left we have the left common carotid and the left subclavian. This is the left brachiocephalic vein where it arcs over the branch of the aorta to reach to the right side. The second level is the level of T4. This is the level of the sternal angle. And at this level, we have two important landmarks, which are the aortic arch on the left and the azygous arch on the right. This is the aorta, the aortic arch. This is the superior vein cava. And this is the azygous arch to reach to the superior vein cava. Posteriorly, this is the trachea and the esophagus. The third level is the level of T5. Uh, this is the level of bifurcation of the trachea, as you can see here, and also the level of bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk into right and left. We have this is the ascending aorta, the descending aorta, this is the superior vena cava, and this is the esophagus, posterior lateral to it is the azygous, and in between is the azygo esophageal line. The level of T6, we can see this section passing through the upper part of the heart. So this is the right atrium and the right ventricle. The right ventricle is the most anterior chamber. And this is the left atrium, the most posterior chamber. And this is the ascending and descending aorta. And this is the superior vena cava. The level of T8 all passes through the heart. So all the chambers will be clearly visualized. This is the right atrium, the right ventricle, most anterior one, and the left ventricle and left atrium, the most posterior chamber. And this is the descending aorta. The level of T10, this level passes through the upper abdomen. So you can see here this is the liver, and this is the spleen, this is the stomach, with the gastroesophageal junction lies at the level of T10 and the IBC. And this is the aorta. Thank you. If you have any questions. Karim. Nam, sir. Rakam Wahid. Number one. Uh, anterior junction, junction line. Okay. This is the anterior junctional line. Noura Mohamed Ijwad. Naam, Ustad. Rakam 2 is the trachea. Trachea, number 2. Zahra. Al-Afu, Dr. Ya Zahra. Ani Zahra Sabah. Zahra Ali Rashid. Naam, Dr. Number 3, Esophagus. Number 3, the Esophagus. <coughs> Noor Baba. Naam, Ustaz. Uh, number four is the right paratracheal line. Number, Asherilum Ali. Number four, right paratracheal line. Okay. Ruh Ali Ola. Sarih. Naam, Ustaz. El five, El Azaigo esophageal strip. Azaigo esophageal strip. Excellent. نور كاتي نعم أستاذ ستة سوبريور فينا كاو 
ظل عندنا سبعة رشا داخل نعم أستاذ نمبر 7 aortic arch this is the aortic arch نمبر 8 رنين نعم 8 right para spinal 9 right para okay. نروح على رقية سعد نمبر نعم دكتور ليفت باراسباينال لاين اوكي يا ليفل هذا رقية كم ليفل هي قلت هي الحد يعني من تي 1 إلى تي 10 هذا تي 4 لا شلون من تي بدت ايش كم ايش كم ليفل عندنا التراسي ليفل اللي هي عددتها 3 و4 و5 و6 مو صحيح؟ بلي اذا مو بدت من تي 1 اذا هذا ليفل 4 اوكي اكو بعد عندك دكتوره ليندا؟ لا هو بس رقم 10 هاي بس رقم 10؟ نعم نروح على صفاء شامل نعم نمبر 10 تشوفي اي استاذ ازايجلس ازايجلس فين ازايجلس فين اتيا ليفل ازايجلس فين Uh, drain into the superior vena cava. Uh, level T4. Level A, at the level of T4. Excellent. Uh, Akubad and the Chi? 